Good evening to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. You see that Texas flag there behind me? Yep, I am in Texas. I'm in Houston, Texas. You can see that yellow box over there. I uh, brought some of my equipment with me for Tropical Storm Imelda, and I'm um, going to set that up tonight with the help of a couple of real good friends of mine, Carrie and Todd. Um, we'll set these cameras out in the Houston area. To kind of monitor things, we also have a new device that we're going to try out to help mount equipment. Uh, one of our crowdfunding partners helped to supply that. Thank you, Scott, for that. You know who I'm talking about there. Um, and just to see what happens. You know, this is not a hurricane. It's not um, a high-impact event in terms of wind and storm surge, but it has the potential of being a very big rainmaker over an area that has had a history of flooding, obviously in the past with Houston, and people down here take this kind of stuff seriously. So here I am. This is my job. This is what I do. What what else? What else am I going to do? You know, this is what I like to do, and not everything is going to be a hurricane, Michael. Right? So we make sure we cover the quote minor events because they do have impacts. And uh, Imelda here, Tropical Storm Imelda is going to have impacts. It's already doing so. It's um, bringing heavy rain, some you know, squally beach conditions, etc. So, you know, it's a big deal. So let's address that and other stuff in today's update. First of all, you get an idea here. The tropics busy, just like we thought they would be. There's TD number 10. We'll address that in a moment. There's Umberto, and there is Imelda. You know, things are starting to line up, just like we thought they might. Uh, with this coming MJO pulse. In fact, if we look at the eastern North Pacific uh, on the Hurricane Center's map, you see several systems there. Kiko, Lorena, Mario. I mean, wow. Look at that. And then another system down here just to the south of the Central American coastline on the Pacific side. And if we look at this on the five-day outlook, that would be tracking you know, parallel to the coast there, but close enough to warrant some concern. What about Lorena in terms of impacts to Mexico? Well, let's get rid of my telestration first of all. Um, yes, and I mentioned this the other day, that this could be an issue uh, with it coming close enough to Mexico to warrant some concern. So heavy rain, you know, some of these uh, resort areas in here, unpleasant, squally conditions, whatever, you know, doesn't have to be a hurricane to be a problem. And this will head up towards the Baja and maybe some of that moisture can get pulled into the southwest United States, but not seen as a big rainmaker for that area of the country. Or northwest Mexico, speaking of that country. In the um, central Pacific, I mean, you got to be kidding me. Look at all this stuff going on. We have a, a disturbance here. Luckily, only a small chance of development. Uh, this system uh, to the... West southwest of Hawaii there, 50-50 shot, and this one about 20%. If we look at these graphically, <laughs> what? What's going on? This is this is the Madden Julian oscillation, and the convectively coupled Kelvin wave. It's all coming together to provide this incredible uptick in activity. In fact, if we look at it, just real quick, I'll pull up the uh, Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies. From University of Wisconsin, look at that. I mean, wow. And I don't mean to sound too enthusiastic, but as a um, enthusiast of the weather, this is something that's very interesting. And, you know, you temper your excitement with understanding that these can harm people. They, they certainly can. But this is amazing to see, and that is the Madden-Julian Oscillation uh, coming through from west to east here. And this convectively coupled Kelvin wave, what is that, you may ask? Just think of it as, like I, I like to refer to it as a fertilizer truck that goes by, and after it goes by, everything's fertile. Whereas the Madden-Julian oscillation is more of a larger scale uh, setup that kind of migrates across over a larger area um, rather than the, than the speed of the convectively coupled Kelvin wave. All very fancy meteorological ways of saying, uh, you know, we just go up here and choose the color green and put a big check mark. It's favorable. That's the bottom line. All right, so let's go back to the National Hurricane Center homepage. 
we need to talk about uh, Umberto real quick. This forecast here, and this is important, hurricane conditions are expected in Bermuda Wednesday night and Thursday morning. And just because the center of Umberto is not forecast to pass over Bermuda doesn't mean that they would escape hurricane conditions. Uh, it is still forecast to become a major hurricane, but you take this donut here and you shift that, you know, right here, something like that, and it could be pretty close to Bermuda, uh, especially if the wind field expands, and especially for folks uh, in those higher hilltops in Bermuda. The southerly flow ahead of uh, Umberto here as it comes by could push waves and some surge action on the southern facing shores of Bermuda. And that's reflected here in the key messages. Storm surge and dangerous breaking waves could cause coastal flooding Wednesday night and Thursday along the southern coast of Bermuda. I wish that I could be in two places at once. It's just far more expensive to go to Bermuda than it was to come to Houston. And it's, you know, what can I do? So here I am in Houston. But the good thing is, I know a couple of people in Bermuda, and they can maybe send some pictures and video or what have you. Uh, and then swells will continue to affect the northwestern Bahamas and the southeast coast of the uh, United States up through east central Florida, North Carolina, you know, right through here, basically, if you know your maps, over the next few days. So please keep that in mind. Bottom line for you folks in Bermuda, um, you're going to have to deal with some of the effects. And Bermuda is right there, by the way. Let me use, like, red or something. You're going to have to deal with some of the effects from Umberto here as it goes by, but not a direct hit from the core of a major hurricane. So, And, and I keep reminding you of this. You'll have the, a chance to sort of fill up your tanks uh, from the rainfall. I learned this when I went out there. The cisterns and these tanks that they have, that's where they get their fresh water mostly, is from rainfall, and they store them in these enormous tanks. Same thing's true down in the Caribbean. And so this could be a very beneficial um, filling. You get a free refill from Mother Nature there, as long as the other effects are not too severe, right? All righty. Back to the home page we go. Now we look at Imelda. Now this system really popped up quick, so to speak. We've been talking about it for the last few days as a possibility but then things happened rather quickly today. All right, so it's inland now, and it's the, the main thing is this right here. Likely to produce some serious flash flooding in and around some big metropolitan areas, such as Houston, up towards Beaumont, Port Arthur. You know, all of southeast Texas here, you know, there's a lot of people that live down here. A lot of commerce, the petrochemical industry, etc. And this could produce a lot of rainfall. And that is a big deal. We're not as worried about the wind or anything like that. Not even necessarily uh, the tornado threat. Maybe some severe weather, but nothing widespread. Not like what we saw with Harvey. But here's the outline from the Weather Prediction Center. Over the next three days, we see how this evolves. That a good chunk of southeast Texas, maybe southwest Louisiana... And this includes the greater Houston area up to Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange, Texas, right? All the way down the coast. Very, very heavy rainfall. Katy, um, you name it. All right? So you know the drill, but show me that you know the drill and that you behave yourselves out there. And don't do anything dumb going through flood water. You say, well, this is no Harvey. Well, hopefully nothing will be a Harvey ever again. But hope by itself not a very good planning tool. You can't just hope something away. It usually doesn't work that way. Um, so look at this. Really fascinating. Honestly. It's, and again, I'll preface this. Yes, I get it. These things do cause uh, loss of life, damage to property. Certainly, I understand that. Probably more than most people will ever realize I understand that. But wow, what a marvel of nature that this came together so quickly, if this was sitting out here coming together like this and was going to make landfall in a day or so, forget about it. We'd be talking about a nasty hurricane coming. 
Look at the upper level anti, uh, anticyclonic flow here, that outflow coming from the system. This thing morphed from being an upper level cold core low pressure area to a very well organized tropical storm. And that is a heck of a satellite animation. Now Houston is sitting, generally speaking, right up in here, okay? Roughly, I mean Houston's a big area. So you see all this bubbling of the atmosphere all around Houston, Galveston Bay down here, Bolivar Peninsula, Galveston proper, Jamaica Beach, Bermuda Beach, down to Freeport, and then more of these feeder bands percolating out over the ocean, out over the Gulf of Mexico. This is a slow mover, and it'll gradually lift up into this area over time, and we are talking about the potential for a lot of rainfall in this area. And that can cause a lot of problems. So honestly, take it seriously. Look at this. Remember, that's bigger than you. And, you know, is it hyped up? You betcha it is, because it should be. Because flooding from tropical cyclones kills a lot of people that shouldn't be killed. It's ridiculous. It should be a zero. And it's all 100% uh, preventable, in my opinion. So when you look at that, I want you to say, all right, that's a pretty formidable weather system. I'm going to take it seriously. That's something else. So I am in Houston, like I mentioned, uh, right there behind me. The equipment in the box is there, and I'll be working to set that out later tonight. All right, looking at the radar, um, doesn't look like much on this zoomed out version, so let's zoom in a little bit. Heavier bands moving in. They're still just south and east of Houston for now, but this is going to rotate up, and overnight, very heavy rainfall, slow moving, any of these bands that set up over an area, especially if they really start to get energized, could dump one to two, maybe two to three inches per hour, and that can be problematic. The bayous around here, the creek, creek streams and rivers, Buffalo Bayou, Braze Bayou, you know them, they could fill up. And that's the reason that I am here, is that I'm going to set up some equipment. You know, you've got the Transtar, the Harris County Flood Control District, all that working uh, in concert with each other with cameras, hundreds of them, up on the interstate system all around the Houston Travel Network. I'm going to place the cameras right down on ground level on some of these bayous, Buffalo Bayou, probably South Maid Creek, and then down in the Myerland area on Bray's Bayou just to see what we get. You know, it's a hit and miss. You never know. Are those going to come out of their banks? But it'll give us a chance to see in real time what's happening, uh, and I'll put a pressure sensor in one of those just to measure the lower pressure uh, from the center of Imelda, which is probably somewhere in there, getting ready to move across the belt line and into greater Houston. All right, real quick look at the GFS. Um, this is the 18Z run, if we just use the slider here. Look over here in Texas real quick. Let's just focus on this for just a moment. You notice... Um, it takes a little while. That's 30 hours, 48 hours. You know, just go back and forth. That's a lot of energy, a lot of moisture, again, working its way in through eastern Texas. So please keep that in mind. It's a slow mover. Imelda, the, the storm, and then the depression, doesn't matter. What we label it, all that coloring in there, to me, indicates energy in the atmosphere. And you can see that little feeder band that it looks like it tries to pull into it the modeling showing you the energy in the atmosphere. Pretty amazing. Now, what about Bermuda? All right, let's back this up just a little bit. There's Bermuda right there. And if we use just the arrows here, the worst of Umberto does look like it will go pretty far to the north and west of Bermuda. So that's great news there. We've already been over this. You know what to expect. I hope you get the fresh water without a lot of problems. Bermuda is tough. It is beautiful. I say tough. They are tough people. They're built well, and they will get through this just fine. Uh, and then we have TD-10 that's likely to become a storm. I don't know what's going to happen with this. More than likely, there's going to be a hole left out here for it to go through, but that's not sealed yet. The deal isn't sealed. The hole could get sealed, and then it comes more west. We'll just have to wait and see. We know that we're coming into this pattern 
of a much more favorable Madden Julian oscillation. And again, that's just fancy term. It's a favorable pattern coming up. We're not even quite there yet. It's just now starting, and it's probably going to last well into October, believe it or not. And it's really going to favor the Western Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, and that's where things naturally shift this time of year anyway as we get towards the latter part of the hurricane season. So a lot to keep up with. All right, where can you see the cameras? We work with the Weather Channel, so they will have the cameras on the Weather Channel. Uh, they have a lot of content that they bring in, obviously. The more impact that one of my cameras shows, the more they show it on the Weather Channel. Makes sense. Our Patreon folks will have access to the cameras. You can go to patreon.com slash hurricane track and see them there. Yes, they will be in our app. We have an app that I do not promote anymore because it's got problems, and I'm not going to promote something that does not work to the best of its ability, but if you already have the app, you know what it's called. Yes, look in the camera section tomorrow, and the cameras should be there, the live feeds. Um, and we're going to work on a different version of the app for next year. I'll talk about that later. All good things in due time. The support that we're getting from Patreon uh, and the crowdfunding is really going to help with some amazing things going forward. So Patreon's tied into our Hurricane Track Insider, our subscriber site that we set up almost 15 years ago. And the web is really the best way to enjoy what we do and to appreciate it to its fullest ability. Because we have all, we got all these multiple cameras set up and this beautiful little dashboard where you can see them all. And it works really, really well. So check that out on Patreon. Um, and you can, you know, support what we're doing at the same time you reap the benefits, all right? So I will all start on this tonight. Going to be up kind of late. That's the way it goes. Um, get rid of me and sign off. From Houston, Texas. Good to be back here. I love this area. It's just a little sprawling and too big for my taste to live here permanently. I'll take Wilmington traffic over this any day. I am Mark Stutter, HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thanks for tuning in. I will be back with another discussion for you in the morning.